Hello, my name is Jim Murphy, Program Manager here at SkyCore on the Lark Router team. Now that we've installed Lark Router, we're going to walk through logging into the console, setting up a carrier connection, and sending a test message. So we come to our login screen and we log in with our credentials given to us during installation. And we come to the gateway status screen. This gives us an overview of the system. You'll see the version number of the software, how long the server's been up and running. Uh, you'll see here that I'm running a non-licensed version of Lark Router. This is fully operational, lets me test everything about the system. I'm just limited to one message per minute throughput. Once I have everything configured and I'm ready to go into production, I can obtain a license key and register the software and remove that limitation. So I need to go to my configuration, Lark, Core, and I just want to verify that I have a DNS name here. Um, since I'm not running an actual domain name, I'm just going to use the IP address. Uh, um, this is also where I would enter my license key once I decide to register the software. I can also update my SSL certificates through this page. And then I'm good to go. Also under configuration, you'll see that we have MMS routing. By default, we use static routes, which means the message is going to come in and be delivered based on the destination number to the carrier route or the VAST route ne uh, necessary. We also support dynamic routing, which we will call out through a webhook to a third-party system to know where that message should be routed. So you can do that to look up account balances, do least cost routing, whatever options you find necessary, we will support it. To find out more about that, just go to larkrouter.com and look at our documentation. We have two kinds of binds in our system. We have the VASP bind and the carrier bind. VASP is for messages coming into our system, usually from value added service providers and carrier binds are messages going out of our system to be delivered. Uh, we do provide a default bind for testing purposes. You'll see that we support MM7, MM4, HTTP. Um, this is we've, the message originating MMS URL. Um, here we just put a dummy URL. If there's any credentials necessary for them to connect with, we pull out, provide those here. And if they want us to return a delivery report, this is the URL we would deliver it to. We can also limit the throughput, restrict it by IP address. Um, none of those are currently necessary. Uh, the one thing we do want to check for, and it's under advanced settings, and this is for our testing purposes. Uh, usually these values are fine, the default MM7 version. Um, but what I do like to look for is to make sure that I allow the VASP to specify the carrier bind for sending messages. Uh, this is very helpful for us in testing, and a lot of the VASP connections can also send you where they want the messages routed. The other item, so we're now going to move to our carrier binds. We'll create a carrier, and in this case, I'm going to be connecting to SkyCore. So they gave me the information necessary to connect to them. I need to, uh, the, I'm just going to label the SkyCore. I'm going to number this bind, number one, because I may want to add additional carrier binds later to SkyCore. I'll create the bind. I can group my binds together if I'm going to do any kind of uh, routing or round robin. Uh, this is my different bind types, MM7, MM4, HTTP, or MM1. The MMSC URL, this is the URL that I'm supposed to send my messages to. The carrier did provide this to me, so I'm just going to cut and paste it from their form. I do not need to provide them with the username and credential and password to connect. Um, we do provide you with, this is the message originating URL. This is for DLRs to come back to us to show that the messages have been delivered. This will need to be provided to your carrier. 
And then if we needed to have any login credentials for that, which with Skycore, we do not. Um, if they've limited our messages for our throughput, we can set this here. So we'll throttle it at our end instead of having to have them throttle it. We also can restrict packet sizes and how many connections. Uh, in our case with Skycore, I don't need to do any of those. Um, they did give me a VASP ID that I need to enter. So I will take that from the form that they gave me. And I will copy and paste that here. I will update our connection. The, it's the status of this is, is stopped at the moment. I do need to start it. So I can just click on this link here and start the bind. Now I can go to send my test message. I will choose the content that I want to send. I have a test file here that I like to use, just different pictures and things. So I will send my Skycore logo. From, this is from the uh, short code that they provided me. In my case, it is 60856. My destination number, uh, we can support either a single message or I can actually pull up a spreadsheet, I mean, a CSV file with a list of phone numbers in it. And then I am ready to send it. So I will pull my phone over here so you can see that it gets sent. Submit the message. Now we are limited to one message per minute, so it does cycle through. Here you can see that it's been delivered, and there it is. So we were able to set up a carrier bind and send a test message and show it on the phone. Thank you for watching.